Uh, we're going to talk about application, visibility, and control. Uh, I have Praveen Raghuraman here. Uh, he is the uh, product marketing in charge of Hive Manager as well as uh, application, visibility, and control. Thank you, Tosh. Just one, one ed uh, edit. I'm a product manager. Manager, sorry. <laughs> That's mm. fine. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be talking uh, about the technology, kind of giving you an overview of uh, uh, you know what are the key pieces that went into the design considerations and uh, and you know it, let's make this very interactive. Uh, that will be a demo later, which Abby will be doing. So this is not necessarily to cover all those pieces here. So. Uh, well, what's cool about our application visibility and control feature is that you can monitor applications in real time that are running on your uh, on your wireless network, and then apply policies specifically based on the user context. And that's that's kind of, that's kind of the key thing. And when we started looking at developing this feature, uh, we had certain design goals and considerations. So one is, I mean, uh, uh, as Abby, uh, Abby already mentioned, you know, we are a pioneer in in distributed. Uh, uh, processing and in terms of using the cooperative control architecture. So it was very, very important for us to actually leverage that framework and really run the AVC engine on the AP. So we did not want to send traffic onto a controller or some centralized device or whatever and, and do the processing there. We really wanted to leverage the distributed processing we already have in place and use the framework. Second is this uh, concept of user profile, which is actually built on all the APs. And you've heard that uh, uh, mentioned many times uh, here today, which is the notion of identity is so important. So there are other vendors which are you know doing application visibility, but what's important is that when we look when we talk to customers, uh, they all want to apply policies differently based on who the user is. So a contractor is treated differently in an organization than an employee or an executive or somebody else who's a guest. So there are differences in how you apply policy and what you do with that. And the third thing is the visualization aspect of it, which is making extremely easy and simple to uh, design the dashboards or the widgets or the reports and being able to provide that with all this context that we already talked about. So those were kind of the, the main considerations. So, and uh, uh, when we also started looking at providing and making this functionality available on the APs, we had the choice of you know building the infrastructure of the classification engine or ourselves or you know leveraging something that is best of breed and really providing value on the on the key architectural pieces that we talked about so we use actually a third party uh, vendor uh, which is uh, and we can classify more than 700 applications using true dpi technology so and what that means is of course we can look at ports and dns names and hosts and all that but the cool thing is there is a lot more in terms of heuristics and other uh, anomalies and things like that that are being employed and we are looking much deeper inside the packet to actually classify what the application is and this is done real time so as flows are coming in on the api as the user comes or a, a client device comes and joins uh, the network right at that point classification is being done in real time and all the statistical gathering and monitoring is happening on each and every ap and we aggregate all those stats, send it up to Hive Manager for purely for uh, reporting and monitoring purposes. So that's kind of how we do it. Uh, also, uh, the other key thing is is being able to, you know, scale uh, the processing. So whether it's few APs or whether it's hundreds of APs or thousands of APs, as the case may be the architecture just works exactly the same way. So it is very much to the the advantages we had already built in terms of how the cooperative control architecture worked from the beginning. Uh, uh, the other uh, kind of important piece of this when we started looking at uh, providing the application visibility and control feature was how do we visualize this on the dashboard? And Abby will be going into the details, but the thing that I want to uh, you know, uh, mention is we really looked at the context, and we took that very, very seriously. So we have four elements of context that we have today, which is one, the network piece, which is which SSIDs are we on. The second thing is, is the location, and we can do location based on multiple different ways. Right? It can be a logical location, it can be a geographic location. We can slice and dice the data when we visualize it based on the location context. The third thing is time. Uh, so you can see data specifically based on what. What that means is that data is actually maintained in buckets 
on, on the APs and all that is processed in terms of being able to you know, aggregate that and index it in any, any form that you want. And the fourth thing, of course, the main one is identity, right? So you can apply policies based on the same user profiles that you've already created in, for your network configuration and then visualize that and as you see problems emerge, apply policies uh, on the APs. So if the hive manager actually goes down or is not connected or whatever, your firewall, your firewall rules, your QoS rules, all that just work exactly the same way as they would otherwise. And classification is done in real time, so uh, the uh, our flows are blocked or throttled, as the case may be, in real time. So those are kind of the main pieces. And uh, you know, I mean, our, our goal is, is to kind of extend on this architecture going forward and bring more interesting things in terms of being able to um, customize applications or do things with uh, other interesting use cases as make it presented. And any support for NetFlow exports or anything along those lines? Currently, we're not uh, is, uh, not actively looking at anything like that. But you know, if if things come up, we'll we'll, we'll consider that. Yeah. What kind of other use cases would you see it potentially being used for? So, so primary use cases, if you see in, in a wireless network, uh, is you know op bandwidth optimization, making sure that the right users are able to use the use the you know the network, and w as we see the shift where anybody and everybody can you know pretty much bring a device and do whatever they want, right? Being able to apply these policies more specifically on the context, so extending that con that notion of identity context more into uh, specific type of application verticals would be one interesting idea, uh, you know, that we could consider. But uh, I, I mean, right now there are quite a few ideas that I'm not, uh, you know, free to talk about. Yeah. But uh, that that would be one thing. Could you see that um, this also being used rather heavily with the um, switch platforms? That that is that is one uh, area of investigation and active consideration right now. Mm. How often are uh, application signatures updated? So uh, it it depends. Uh, as soon as we have a sizable number of application signatures, we feel we want to uh, roll out. We have built the infrastructure, so we could actually do it very often, like every month. Our plan right now is to do periodically, so that it's not very disruptive to uh, customers and how they want to use it. But it's, I would say, like a quarterly update is kind of what we're thinking. Now you said that so that it won't be disruptive to the customers. Is there something that you need to do after you apply your no, signature? No. No. Well, the, his, his, the, the thing essentially is that uh, a, cust a customer has to at least apply the new. They have to get the new signatures, right? So if they don't want to, you know, they can. They don't have to. Okay. It's supported exactly the way. Uh, it's a part of the high voice firmware upgrade. Just works. If they're Lee, they have to reboot every time. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else gets to do a Delta config update. Yeah, it, thank you. It's a Delta config. It's not a reboot. So it's actually, you know, you can actually <coughs> apply a uh, update right in time, and you know, everything just works. Concept. Okay. Any any more questions? Uh, Performance impact. Good question. So, so what actually? Uh, since we are doing this using the distributed processing on all the APs. Each AP is processing flows in real time. So we've done some testing. Under steady state conditions, you will see less than 5% impact on overall CPU and uh, throughput performance. Under extreme conditions, which is all concurrent flows are, are being classified right at the same point, at that point in time, you would see an average of 10 to 15% degradation. But remember, uh, as the number of client connections increase, there's going to be airtime contention, which will be a bigger problem than before you know, uh, CPU becomes a bottleneck. So uh, we can actually scale up to multiple hundreds of connections all happening at the same time. We don't really see any, uh, any degradation. Cloud computing. I, 